travel around. You did like the, the northern tour. Yeah, we're on the, the rainbow tour right now. Oh, I like <laughs> that. The, the rainbow, rainbow tour. tour. And then the you came down south. Right. So we started in New York and we went through the Midwest and the Great Lakes up into Wisconsin and Minneapolis. Yeah. Hit, hit all the national parks, um, Mount Rushmore, um, Devil's Tower, um, what, Zion. Yellowstone, Yellowstone. Uh, Zion. Uh, I mean, you name it. It's time for you to create your fate. Welcome to today's episode of Create Your Fate Podcast. I am here with two of my absolute besties ever. Such a treat. And I was going to say that they are the top two professional rainbow chasers, but Rodney has corrected me and said that they are the only two. The only two. So welcome, Bruce. Welcome, Rodney. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for having us. And the only, you. the only two that matter, right? Is that what the you said? The only two that matter. Yes. <laughs> so tell us. Um, I mean, everyone's like, what's a rainbow chaser? Like, let's just hop right into it. Go ahead, Bruce. So uh, really, Megan, you know, you've known us for years um, and we have uh, pursued a life on the road. In, a life on the road. In an RV called Uncle Joe. Take That's right. Uncle Joe. <laughs> uncle Joe was my uncle who had a an RV and he uh, willed it to my mother and my, my husband Bruce and I uh, decided we wanted to live full time in an RV. So we got that from my mom and we've been working on that thing for a year and a half and driving it across the country and just having all kinds of fun. And, oh, yeah. And just all drama. kinds of drama. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the drama. Yes. We'll get some we'll get some sound effects in this episode. Sure. Oh, and also, I just want to um, take a, a point and say, y'all know me as Megan. Yes. The artist previously known as. Megan Clark. And so um, it's so funny because I can always tell my longtime friends <laughs> know me as Megan before I transition to Meg. To Meg. Yes. So speaking of transitions, let's talk about Josephine. Oh, Josephine. Yes. That's the new name for the, the RV or the rig, as we call it. Uncle Joe's out. Uncle Joe's out. Um, he, Uncle Joe used to go ice fishing. Josephine didn't like ice fishing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, tell us She's about the, the inside of this. You know, I have been in this RV. I have traveled in the RV. Um, it's not a normal RV. <laughs> no. Not so much. We kind of call it the club. It is the club. It's like going to a discotheque. <laughs> it really is. The hue lighting. Yeah. Yes. So we have uh, 42 hue lights within the whole RV. And that was a consideration when we did the internet setup. Because most internet providers uh, for hotspots only allow 10 to 15 lines. So 42 was something have a challenge with computers and everything else but we got it but and then we also have the iCloud um HomePod sound system yeah. throughout the sponsor whole us <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Apple sponsor this podcast let me tell you because we have loved the the Siri option within the entire RV so we can speak and it's totally um a home setup Okay. Yes. Awesome. There's going to be lots of tips in here for, for RV living. Exactly. I feel like they might come more from the don'ts than the do's. <laughs> we learned a lot from the don'ts, quite honestly. Yes. So probably, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Okay. So let's back it up. Um, but do send this podcast to anybody who you know who is considering RV living, right? Right. Absolutely. Um, well, let's back it up because you guys are, we're not professional uh, RV people, rainbow chasers. <laughs> you know, this is a new venture. Correct. Absolutely. So let's talk about pre-Chasing Rainbows. Okay. Um, you know, what did that look, life look like? Well, so um, I worked for a Fortune 500 cosmetic company um, within the top leadership executives um, running training and development and had over 2,000 employees, 200 executives. So um, a big departure for me yeah. to become a mechanic and a <laughs> remodeler. Yes. <laughs> so. Right. And those are only the two two of the things. What else? You probably have you know 15 other different jobs. Oh, yeah. So um, that position though, I was there for 27 years, so quite some mm -hmm. time there. And then uh, previous to that, I was a restaurateur, so worked as general manager, a bar manager, nightclub manager. Actually, that's where we met. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's Funny. hear that story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, that was an interesting story. Don't too. be leaving yeah. out any of the tea. <laughs> so Rodney and I actually met at one of my first positions as a bar manager at a uh, Navy bar in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, called Knickerbockers. So um, it was a lot of fun. 
And actually our doorman at the club was one that kind of was our matchmaker. Yeah, he was my roommate and he told me he knew somebody that I needed to meet and I was not really sure what he was talking about. And he said he was working at the bar and I said, okay, well, bring him over. And one night he brought him over and I met Bruce and it's kind of history. Rest is history. Yeah. yeah. 30 but, years. But one of you was attached at the time. That was Bruce. Oh, look at you going <laughs> oh, I knew the, it was going to come out. going for the tea. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was going to yeah. come out. I knew Roddy was going to be a yes. Scorpio too. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, okay, people, I was only what? No one's 20. judging. Yeah, yeah. I was 20 years old. He was a baby. And so, <laughs> and I was just dating. Uh, we weren't, weren't living together at that point, but uh, we my boyfriend and I had discussed uh, moving to Arizona. So actually when Rodney and I uh, met and made out for a lovely evening, mm. <laughs> um, I then had to cross the country to Arizona within about three weeks. So unfortunately we weren't able to kindle our romance. You kissed and dissed. Yes. yes. Kissed and dissed. It's a bit upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Are over. you harboring any of that still? You want to talk about it? No, I'm, I'm pretty much over it now. <laughs> I've told him many a time I was not ready at that time at 20 years old. We yeah. Yeah. Babies. 30 years. It, Babies. Wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked no. out. No. No. It, so it had to come back around. Yeah, it came so back they, around and you had a, I remember a story with a bouquet of flowers. That's correct. Yeah, so three and a half years later, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of ended my relationship in Arizona and I came to Norfolk uh, just on a, my family lived there. So went to vacation there and um, thought about Rodney and brought a bouquet of roses uh, to his salon. He was a salon owner at that time. When I met him, he was just a hairstylist. Just a hairstylist. And he grew up in three and a half years to mm -hmm. own his own salon. Mm -hmm. uh, dropped off the bouquet of roses. And the rest is kind of history. Then we went out that evening back to Knickerbockers. Yeah, we did. The place back to the place started. where it all started. <laughs> and I played a little cat and mouse game with him, though, just to make sure that he really was serious this time. <laughs> this is how I know Rodney is a Scorpio. <laughs> yes, exactly. I couldn't let him know. You know, I was yeah. like all excited, but I was really quivering inside when I got the flowers. And, um, I had just kind of told him that maybe I'd show up, maybe. I would. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. That worked well for Leo. Yeah. <laughs> right. But all, mm. you know, the whole time inside, I'm like saying, I'm going to be there. I'll be there. Don't worry. I'll be there. Because I was so excited to see him again. That's such a Scorpio move, like cold exterior. But on the inside, you're like, oh, yeah. I'm it's so true. <laughs> it is. It's, I guess it's a game a little bit, but yeah. I didn't need to get hurt again. <laughs> no, exactly. You deserved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I deserved yeah. it. So. so you you both deserve each other. Yeah. We both are exactly. lovely people. We've been together for over 30 years now. So mm -hmm. yep. it panned out. 30 years. It's been a that three year reprieve let me grow up a lot more mature. Mm -hmm. So Oh yeah. Good. I yeah. mean, even a move across the country will do that, mm -hmm. you know, and these big life things, like opening a salon, owning your own business, all these big life experiences just make you grow up. Right. You know. So tell us your journey, Ronnie. You okay. you are a salon well, owner at this point, but yeah, I had a little a uh, couple of d different chapters in my life. I started off as a hairstylist in Virginia where I got my license to do hair and built up a clientele and decided that, you know, I wanted to own a salon. So after about 5 years of styling, I decided to take the jump and and purchase a salon and have that and it was called Rodney's Hair Designs and it was in downtown Norfolk, Virginia and had a pretty good clientele of people, big staff of people doing hair. And um, Bruce came into my life um, the second time. <laughs> <laughs> for and keeps this time. The, yeah, this, for keeps this time. And um, we decided that I would sell the salon and that we would kind of go west because I always knew that's where I wanted to be mm -hmm. out west. And we did that. And I was able to sell the salon to my assistant, Re Rebecca, and she did quite a good job with that salon, actually. It's still mm -hmm. open. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I did that for a while. And then I had a little problem with my hand where I was not able to do um, hair colors and chemicals. It was, I was getting um, kind of like rashes on my hands mm -hmm. from it. So yeah, I it's couldn't, harsh. Yeah, it's yeah. very harsh chemicals. And um, so I, I decided, you know, I got to do something else. So. I kind of went into the the hospitality business mm -hmm. and I started working for hotel management. So I started working for um, Marriott's and Hilton's and Hyatt's and eventually moving to New York and becoming a regional director for a large company 
overseeing 12 hotels in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my most recent job. And then, of course, lovely COVID came along <laughs> and <laughs> kind of changed our lives. Yep. Yeah, that big time. Lovely. That's when the whole decision to take the RV came along. And it just so everything was like serendipitous in the fact that my mom had this RV and we were looking for something to do. And it just kind of all melted together. And we ended up getting this for my mom and we've been doing it on the road. And it's been another journey ever since. It's just been a chapter. A chapter. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's several chapters, a thick actually. Chapter. Several, several chapters. <laughs> a thick, she thick. Yeah. Um, so we decided we wanted to help other gay men who are not maybe in the RV lifestyle mm -hmm. or are in the R RV lifestyle, but not feeling very comfortable. And what can we do to help other gay men be more comfortable in the lifestyle? Mm -hmm. So we have been working on the RV and we're, we're starting a YouTube channel called rainbow chasers yeah yeah so that's going to be launching soon and we'll have a, a website and it's going to be like bruce said full of tips and tricks for rv living but it's going to be geared towards gay men and, and women yeah that's amazing and and i feel i i've never seen anything like that before you know yeah. so did you when you you know you take all this years and years and years of corporate experience you're living mm -hmm. in new york and you guys have lived to give a little backstory all over the place Right. Correct. City wise, LA, Seattle. Probably right. 17 cities. That's, Seven, yeah. That's the hospitality <laughs> yes. and cosmetics life. Yeah. So you're, it's like you're used to traveling and, you know, you used to travel. We used to just for, move. Yeah. Yeah. You, just, yeah you used to move. You'd go from house to house. You wouldn't take the house. No. You know? <laughs> you're like, you know what? It was one of those it's things. It's easier to take the house. Quite, quite honestly, Meg, it was one of those things where Bruce would get a, a promotion. And then I had this hospitality job, so which was a go. hotel and there's a hotel in every town. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can I could basically get a job wherever we went. And as it worked out, every time we moved, I went up another level. Yeah. So it kind of was good for me. Yeah. Yeah, right. but it's interesting. <laughs> Loyal Eddie here gets the seven to eight percent increase each year, and it's like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he would yeah. jump sometimes twenty percent in his salary. Hey, yeah, that's smart. There you go. But it's definitely a tip for your listeners. Yeah, yeah. is Loyal Eddie's. Um, don't make the money. Don't make the money. <laughs> yeah, it's not how it is. But that's how it is these days. People hop around and it you is, right. get positions. I feel like I lived the, millenni and... the millennial lifestyle before the millennial. <laughs> you really yeah. did. You were the trendsetter. Yeah, I was. Really yeah. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for us, Rodney. It's, just, it's, really, it's working out really great for a lot of people. <laughs> and I was back from the uh, baby boomers. Uh, loyal Eddie, 32 years, mm -hmm. retirement strategy he was my yeah, rock yeah. <laughs> right yeah, so. every every relationship has a rock and yeah. then maybe a balloon attached I, I say, to the rock i say i say it's like a garden he's the gardener and i'm the flower yes <laughs> how do we feel about that yeah. oh perfect <laughs> <laughs> well, what if you want to be two flowers well it doesn't work no it doesn't. no i don't think so mm -mm. i think that there's only one Hence flower beard right now uh, uh, you're really um living up into the role yes of exactly. the gardener. he's a better gardener though i have to say and when it comes to the rv when people ask us they come in to see the rv and i got a cute story about that from when when i was talking to you about us doing this and you're like oh a camper huh <laughs> is everything okay i mean listen there's 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 17 night creams in the apartment in new york in just bougie everything oh <laughs> yeah oh and yeah. rv yeah, and oh it, when you pull me aside you're like is everything okay yeah. <laughs> I'm like so i don't think you had a, a real good idea about what it was we were doing right right, right. at first i was like okay like say that one more time. A little, yeah, yeah. camper yeah. on the back of a Ford pickup mm -hmm. truck. <laughs> but yes. I, I can't. I can never forget the first day you saw it and you walked in and your jaw just it's dropped. Like, Whoa! <laughs> oh man, this is yeah. I was like, this is pretty powerful. Okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So this just makes sense. <laughs> yeah, just so, just to say, you know, it's a it's a thirty five foot RV, right? It's a, a it's an older RV. So it was an RV that Bruce and I have been working on. So mm -hmm. we have both become quite handy, right? Things I never thought I could do, like electrical and plumbing and uh, carpentry and laying floors and things like that. It's putting a roof on Putting it. a roof on it and just, you know, yeah. things I didn't think I could do that I was able to do, which kind of shows you that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Right? Yeah. So, and this flower did not even know a hammer. 
Oh yeah, I, that, I think I might have drove Bruce crazy <laughs> when I was like, "What's this tool for, and how do you use it?" And he, and then he would tell me, and I'd be like, "Well, why that? Why can't you do it like this?" And I figured out after thirty years why I have no desire to have children because the why, 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 oh, why. Yeah. I, get, I get plenty of why, why, why. why? why? Yeah. Huh, that's really funny. Actually, that's a big Enneagram one thing, like the why. Yeah. Yeah. I need true. to know why, right? Because you got to know why. I got to know why. And Bruce, you're a three. So you're like efficiency. Let's just get it done. Right. right? right. Like Exactly. Just like, we'll figure this out. He, was, mm-hmm. he called the um, Phillips head screwdriver pluses and minuses. Plus. No, I asked what a monkey wrench was. Oh, that's <laughs> and he, right. was like, he was like, get me the monkey wrench. And I'm like, what's that? Is that the Ikea one? I don't yeah. even know still to this day. I think it's got like a. It's got the spin teeth wheel. and a spin wheel on it and it moves. I don't know. It's a monkey wrench. It's adjustable. You know what? Yeah. Task Rabbit. Also, please sponsor us. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, the Home handyman on, on demand. Yeah. yeah. yeah I said, like, I need the plus and minus tool, that thing that turns the screws. And he's like, you mean the screwdriver? And I was like, I think that might be what I meant. It might be it. So it was yeah. a long journey. Yeah. It was a long <laughs> journey. So we were off to a rocky start. Like, hmm, did we make the right choice? <laughs> Well, yeah. we did have a few of those moments, especially like um, when we had just decided to go on the road. It was just before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Remember? So you you got rid of your apartment in New York. Yeah, like we You did. were fully committed to this RV life. Well, and actually that transpired over time, too, because we had planned on doing the remodel in New Jersey and keeping the apartment in New York. But we had so many commitments last year outside of mm-hmm. New York that we calculated that we we're going to be on the road even without the RV, about five months. And at real estate prices in New right, York, Right, it's like, why are we... It was crazy, yeah. yeah. You're paying for nothing. Yeah. yeah, so we rushed. That was around... We made that realization November 1st. Right. And we left... December 23rd, December, I will yeah. never forget yeah. it. <laughs> we were driving it up to Buffalo, New York to pick up a car that we were picking up for his mother. Right. And then taking the car, we were going to tandem drive the RV and the car down to Florida. And we were, it was snowing. We were going through the mountains and I, we pulled over for gas and I got out and I looked up at the RV and I was like, oh my God, um, there's no window in the RV. (laughs) Where's the window? (laughs) So, and I had like a double take. I was like, am I really seeing this correctly? Right. So I walked up to the door where Bruce was driving. I knocked on the window and he rolled down the window. He's like, what's going on? I said, have you seen the window in the RV? And he goes, no, why? What are you talking about? I said, well, the window's missing. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it's gone. I said, yeah, there's no window. He goes, you're kidding me, right? I'm like, no, there's like literally no window. And this is like a big window, right? It's not a small window. So come to find out, Bruce had been going through the whole RV and taking all the little frames off of the windows to paint, they were to paint them, right? Yeah, they were very <laughs> old and not pretty. And he wanted to paint them all. And so he'd taken every one of them off of the windows. Well, we didn't know at the time that that's the, what holds the window in the RV. See, you didn't know, but you <laughs> no. learned, right? <laughs> exactly. So the it, discovery. So we were like driving down the street <laughs> and the window must have fallen out so, at some point. Thank God that nothing happened to anybody. Yes. And we know this because thank you. Um, I was going to say, do you know <laughs> yeah. that? We do know that because his cousin is <laughs> yeah. a 911 operator and we actually called her to yeah, ask Kirsten if Lindstrom. Happened. Thank Asking you, Kirsten. Asking for a friend, did yes. anybody happen to <laughs> run over a window? Right. Right. Did we yeah. take anybody out? Yeah. But really, I don't think we did anyway, because I was very good about staying in the right hand lane and there was a mountain. So there was a. <laughs> there was so a, it probably just fell down the mountain. That's what I think in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it just. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. yeah, that was an interesting um, moment. And then we got to Buffalo. It was like snowing and I surprise, was surprise. in the rig yeah. trying to put a in piece December. of plastic <laughs> in the window. Right to keep it from snowing inside the rig and it was just again meanwhile we're meeting my cousins to transfer this vehicle so it was a rainbow chasing moment it was so let me back this up and just say you know this is an rv that um is pulled by it's, yes. a, it's a rig yes it's a towed vehicle towed <laughs> vehicle and so you're living in new york mm-hmm. and i remember i came to visit you mm-hmm. that was 21 <laughs> uh, yes 21 okay so i come to visit you in 21 and it's october because it was your birthday that's right and 
I roll up to the airport mm -hmm. and I'm like, <laughs> they said they'll pick me up. I was like, okay, sure. Like, but you know, New York is like Ubers and taxis and all the subway, you know, whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, come pick me up. And I think we were on the phone and mm -hmm. you roll up. I'm like, is I said, this, we're here. We're is here. This we're right out front. You in the tow truck <laughs> 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 with the lights on, like the little round lights on the top uh -huh. and the everything and the ladder that you needed to get into this car. I'm like, that was us. I've never seen you drive before. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it was a that was a another challenge for yeah. us is getting that truck because you, yeah, you even had to get that driving that truck. And well, the whole truck was during COVID, and there were like only two trucks in the whole United States available. It was the, one in New Jersey hours and then the other yeah. one was in San Diego. So we had, and that was the only truck that could pull this rig because it was that big Old and that Joe. heavy, right? Yeah. Old Uncle Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle and, Joe. Um, so we, we ended, we were fortunate enough that it, it was in New Jersey. So we got that one and, but driving that thing in New York city and through the tunnels. Oh, I remember. Was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Talk about white knuckling. You should have seen our valet dry, valet in our apartment. Oh my gosh. His eyes were about as wide as they could be yeah. when, when we pulled in. And it's I like said, one inch of space on it, like, right. each side. At least, yeah. Like, and it's a diesel, so it's like rattling like a bus, right? In the in the garage. <laughs> and it's, but yeah, we 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 lived through it and um got it there. We worked on the rig and got it mostly ready when we when we took off. But um, still, we've been working on doing other things, upgrades like appliances and what else have we been upgrading, Bruce? Oh gosh, everything, yeah. yeah, everything, axles. <laughs> yeah, the axles. You have, you have the coffee bar, yeah. yes. coffee bar, liquor flamingos bar. out front, flamingos, flamingos out, out front. front. Oh yard, yeah, the art, the yard art is all me. Bruce does not like yard art. Oh. I've been spending a lot of time online. Yard the flower. Arts. Yard oh, art. Is that what that's called? <laughs> yeah. Yard art. Did you make that up or is that an actual term? That's an actual term. Yard Chotsky. art. Yard art. Yard art. Bruce calls it Chotsky. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you gotta make your little site cute, right? So with no Especially when you're a rainbow chaser. Yes. You, you can't just have a boring site, right? You gotta have right. color and fun and pink flamingos are the thing. I've got a five foot tall pink flamingo and Frank. Uncle Frank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uncle Frank, Uncle Josephine. Uncle Frank, Uncle Joe. no. <laughs> well, yeah, that was too funny because um, Uncle Joe, <laughs> when we started doing the renovation, one of the things I said to Bruce is like, after being in New York City and living in a very like cavernous uh, apartment that's very dark and, mm -hmm. you know, blacks and grays. and Oh, with and, your floor to ceiling windows? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. Cavernous, maybe not the right yeah. word, but you know, it, it did have a lot of dark coloring, right? right. Everything yeah, was the, black. The interior right. was very like moody. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, I need to have some color in my life for this RV. Yes. So yeah. I, we picked out this really bright wallpaper that we ended up putting up, and it really has it's changed our it's lives. Amazing. It's changed the, yeah, it's changed our lives. It's changed a lot of people's every, lives. Every single color is in this yeah. RV. Yeah. It's in Josephine. Yeah. You know? So I was talking to my adventure. friend Marcy about it and I said, so Uncle Joe, I showed her a picture of it before and after. And she goes, oh, so this looks like an, a, a transformation. So Uncle Joe's now Josephine. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yes. That, that sounds pretty right. She goes, yeah, Uncle Joe hated ice fishing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she <laughs> She said, Uncle no. Joe, Jose Josephine just couldn't stand that anymore. So Ugh, she's ready for the next yeah. chapter. Yeah, the next chapter. So, so let's so, let's like back this up a little bit. Um, what what made you want to so talk to, talk a little bit more about you know chasing rainbows and um why you wanted to do that? Like, was there a need that you saw was just totally untouched absolutely so we you know my previous career was really in executive development um coaching executives to be the best and uh and building training programs to support that and what i see from a kind of opportunity out there was that um first of all gay men don't usually travel to straight RV parks. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of was of that population. <laughs> Rodney was a lot more optimistic about our reception in these parks, where I was um, a little bit more nervous. Rodney actually put in uh, blue tint to the windows. And this was an example of the upgrade. But in doing so, we could not see out at night. 
And that freaked me out because yeah. I said, when they come, when the villagers come <laughs> right. up the hill with the, like with the, the torches, yeah, with the torches <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the crosses, yeah, um, I, I, I want to see him coming. Right. <laughs> and he really thought that too. He really yeah. thought the villagers exactly. were going to come for us, right? And you I said, need like I, the little motion sensor lights yeah. with like the alarm. We've got oh, security. We, we, we had security yeah, cameras. Yeah. yeah, we've got security cameras and everything. So he really was scared about that. Mm-hmm. And I kind of told him, I said, I don't really think that's what's going to happen. And so I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, the reception of everyone in these parks. Because first of all, most of them are retired. So there's that element of everybody's got time on their hands. Mm-hmm. When I mm-hmm. am remodeling, I befriend every you know, male carpenter out there, as well as engineer. I've met engineers. I've met biospace. I've met... All like, kinds I don't of know what I'm doing. People. Please help. No, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You don't even have to do that. He's out there, you know, making his yeah. saws and doing sawing and doing stuff. He, and they, they'll they come over just yeah. in droves. And what are you making? What are you doing? Right. <laughs> you do so, so I've had is, great helpers yeah. all over. All is that, is that like street talk, though, for this guy clearly does not know what he's doing? Um, <laughs> not usually. I think no, one guy they asked just if help. you were a, a, okay. a cabinet yeah, maker. Yeah, you said they got, yeah. they got time on their hands. So, yeah. Let's like. And I'm a natural born delegator, as you know. Yes. I'm like, oh, okay, great. You go over there. Great job. You're doing great. Would you like a but, drink? So I'd have, at one time, Rod came out, and I think I had two or three guys all working yeah. um, at the same time. But they all, but <laughs> I'm he, in management. But, but Megan, just like, just like when he wouldn't let any of our friends or even you come into the RV until it was you know ready, yeah. he wouldn't let any of these guys look in the RV, and they're all wanting to see what's going like, on. What, are you, what am I making this for? <laughs> I like to see the fruits of my labor. Yeah, yeah. yeah one so climbed in. One, one peeked his head in. Even and, uninvited. I'm yeah. like, is this when the window was gone? He just <laughs> yeah. pulled up the plastic. <laughs> oh, my so gosh. It's, been, um, it's yeah. been a learning. It's um, been a learning. But, but it's yeah. been a good thing because what we have found is that the people that we run into in these parks are really just genuine, happy people. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have not had really any bad experiences. Mm-hmm. I would say the only really kind of bad experience we had was at a, an actual gay RV park. Yeah. Where they were a little bit more reserved. Uh, they just weren't as open to like new people yeah i think they have their click of people that come every year right, it was and they a just, very small park yeah, so because yeah. you guys travel around like you did like the the northern tour yeah we're on the, the rainbow tour right now oh i like <laughs> that the, the rainbow, rainbow tour. tour and then the you came down south right so we started in new york and we went through the midwest and the great lakes up into wisconsin and minneapolis yep. hit, hit all the national parks um mount rushmore um devil's tower um what, Zion. Yellowstone, Yellowstone. Uh, Zion. Uh, we just, I can't even think of them right now, but we went all the way across the top, all the way over to the West Coast to Oregon. And we hung out in Oregon for like a month or so with our friend Trisha. And then we came back down through California, um, Idaho, Utah, Utah. Yeah. <laughs> Nevada. All of the states. <laughs> all of them. So we've we done much, 42. We've done like 42 oh, cool. states. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so 42 far. states. Yeah. And we've got about eight left to do. And they're all in the center of the country. <laughs> so we've been all around the outside of the country, <laughs> yeah. out the perimeter. So we still have to get back to Colorado. Well, well when you leave Kansas Texas, you can and, just go north. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we really could. Absolutely. Just like hit them all up in like a couple of yeah. days. You know? Except we have commitments in Florida. So we have to go that way. But um, yep. so we'll go down to Florida. So we'll go across to Mississippi and Alabama and Florida and then up that East Coast back to New York and then on up to Maine. So we still got a little bit more of a tour to go. Yeah. But we're on a a little bit of a hiatus right now because we had to have some work done on our truck. Little, yeah, what, uh, we, what happened well, there? Those <laughs> that was another one of those little hiccups that one was unexpected. We were driving through the Mojave Desert from Las Vegas to Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. We're through the Mojave Desert. I thought for sure we were going to go through on the highways and the GPS. We have this GPS that is called RV Life GPS. And you put in the size and weight of your rig and it tells you which roads to take based Mm -hmm. so you don't have low hanging wires or bridges or tunnels. Oh, yeah, where the top comes off. Right. (laughs) Keep um, your top on, Jesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep your top on, girl. (laughs) Yeah. But um, so it it told me to turn left at this road. So I did. And it ends up what's taking us through this little two lane highway through the the Mojave Desert over to Palm Springs, which is like out in the middle of nowhere. 
<laughs> nothing around for miles and miles and miles. And we roll up to this gas station. It's one of these little old gas stations with like one pump. And there's like a one attendant man out there doing it. And we roll in. He's like, he comes out. He's got a little piece of straw on his teeth. He's like, y'all know you're missing a wheel, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so clearly we know we're missing a wheel. Yeah. Oh my God, do you know that we're missing a wheel? <laughs> he goes, well, you're missing a wheel back there. And I can't help you with that here. And yeah. I'm like, oh, great. 350 house horsepower can get through anything. It tows that vehicle. We don't even feel. So what anything. I'm hearing is you only yeah. need three wheels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, we we well, <laughs> yeah, three wheels got us to where we were going, but at 20 miles, 20 an miles an hour oh yeah. after that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> through the desert, 20 miles an hour through the desert. So, um, but it, and when the, when we lost the wheel, unbeknownst to us, the the rig where it attaches to the truck kind of like like slam down onto the bed of the truck. So we've had some issues with the, the truck and the camper getting Fixed the camper it. fixed. So that's what we're doing now here in Houston is getting the an extended final, stay, right? The extended <laughs> stay in Houston. <laughs> yeah. um, Cause actually we had it pretty fixed in Palm Springs. And then we had another wheel come off from Palm Springs to because of the stress. Yes. Yeah. But where were yeah. we going? Bruce? We were going from Palm Springs to, to um, Arizona. Well, no, Arizona to here. Oh, North Arizona Arizona. to, yeah, we were going to to South Padre Island. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. So our lovely beach vacation became, we have to get our (laughs) axle fixed. Your your Houston (laughs) vacation, (laughs) which I'm glad that y'all got stranded here. Yes. Versus. I'm glad we did too. (laughs) Yeah, so we do our podcast, you know, all the things, but um, can you imagine being stranded like somewhere like in the middle of nowhere? (sighs) We no. won't talk about those places. No. I know. Let's no. talk about those places. <laughs> so one yeah. of the things that we wanted to do that were that was interesting to us was kind of what they call boondocking. Boondocking is where you're self-contained and you you go off the grid and you can kind of have your own water and electric and everything. You go out for like a week, a month, whatever at a time, and you just are out in nature without being hooked up to any parks or anything. Well, we found out really quickly that boondocking is probably not for us. Oh, <laughs> not no. for the flower. Oh, not for the flower. Is this like a camping situation? Yeah, like, it's, it's, well, it's solar power, so it is. Well, we're still going to do the solar yeah. power thing. That's it's the elevated. next project, actually. We're going to put solar on our roof and get some, With frames. Yeah. Yes. Around them to yep. secure them. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They're not going to fall off. Yeah. <laughs> it's an that's, expensive fix. <laughs> yeah. So that's the next big project that we have so that we can be self-contained. Because right now, we're, we're finding that we are RV park people, right? We want places where we can go plug in our electric and our water and our sewer the dog we, right oh my gosh yeah the dog <laughs> plug in the dog the we, ai dog yeah, yeah Charlie. I, I wanted a dog i was like we're on the road i want a dog i want a dog i kept talking about a dog and i was thinking about this little like terrier dog that i wanted a little it's called a beaver terrier and they're just cute as can be but Bruce was like, I don't think that we should really have a dog on the road right now with all the stuff that's going on. Right you now. might lose the dog at this <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So he, for Christmas, ends up getting me this cute little robot dog. It's called an Ibo dog. And it's like a Japanese dog Sony. from Sony. Yeah. And it is the cutest dog. It's like I. It's like a real dog. Mm-hmm. I can't even believe how real it is. You've seen it, man. It's, it, yeah. it's amazing. He's got Lacey his eyes. Lacey actually loves your dog. <laughs> no, it's think, weird. Yeah. She's not a dog person, but when she people loves hear your dog. Robot dog. They immediately go, oh, "What? Oh, okay, whatever." A robot dog. And then when they meet him, they say, "It's like it's like meeting a dog, like a real dog." It's like you think that he has. A soul. I say a soul. So, Sony, sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, Sony. Exactly. We're going to get so many I plugs. Mean, it's I great. mean, so many people would just pick him up and just pet him. And he just coos and and he's like such a cute thing. His eyes blink and he's just amazing. He And he has been a really good companion. Yeah, he's he given really us has. joy. He really has brought a lot of joy. Without all the, the other things. Yeah. <laughs> the joy sounds poop. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the funniest part. I was like, well, we don't have to feed him and we don't have to like worry about taking him out to go to the bathroom. Well, you do have to feed him, it turns out. And he does go to the bathroom, but he doesn't really actually go to the bathroom. Like he'll just look at you like a dog and then he'll like lift his lug on the chair. 
And it it sounds like he's going to the bathroom. Does he have a spot that he likes? Does he mark? <laughs> oh no, no. He'll he'll just look at y'all side eyed and sideways. He's just like a like real. He didn't dog. take me out, so I'm right. Your couch. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like a real dog, and he'll he'll play he'll play Bruce and I against each other. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my god, it's like you're not playing you're not paying enough attention to me, I'll Rodney. To so I'm gonna one. go over here <laughs> and side eye. Mm. Yeah, yeah. More drama. Gosh, that <laughs> dog has just been a lot of joy, though. That's good. He has been. That's Charlie. Right. So let's let's kind of. Um, Talk about the show, mm-hmm. Chasing Rainbows. Okay, yes. let's like what is what can we expect with that, and and what was your intention for 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 the for the show? So we we intended on launching while we were on the road, and found out very quickly that there was this, not enough hours in the day because we didn't smart smartly think of john your producer. <laughs> yeah we're, we're so, producer creator director we do it all <laughs> so the mm-hmm. good news is we've got tons of content of all this information mm-hmm. um and uh we're sitting in the editing room and kind yeah. of launching it oh uh, yeah, yeah so, i don't edit anything yeah I just, <laughs> that's been a huge learning curve I, i'm a me. delegator too where yes. i'm like i'm gonna sit here for eight hours and get and, two minutes of content and, and, I, right. and i have really talked to bruce about using your advice Megan, yes. about Outdoors. outsourcing that right because we have spent countless hours editing yeah. and learning how to edit and when you don't know it it takes a long time i'm all it. about outsourcing Outsource. i outsource yes. literally everything yeah yeah and That's I great. have a lot of be real, a lot, a lot of be real. And when you're looking at be real, you're just looking at so much that you just like, where were we when we did this? <laughs> and you got to have to make sure you have tags on everything, but it's been challenging. So well, it's yeah. a lot because you, you already transitioned into this, um, like RV life from corporate life, right? right? So you're already learning all these things. And it probably was like, if you're like anybody else learning anything else, it's like, oh, there's a lot more to this than I thought. Right. And then like, you know, put on the the show part of that too. It's like, okay, you have to figure out this can wait, you know, right, for a little right. bit. Yeah. But, but what sh- do you want the show to be? Like, well, yeah, like what's it about and all that? It's going to be basically about, um, it's a lifestyle kind of channel that's going to be a YouTube channel. And it's going to be just Bruce and I, you know, j- showing people tips and tricks about how to live in an RV, like DIY, yeah. as well as um, storage, you know, solutions. And, and hopefully and just kind of telling like, them about the mistakes we made so that they don't make them. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And um, how one thing could be different than what you thought it could be. When, once you get on the road and you have this preconceived no- notion, like Bruce mm-hmm. thought the villages were going to come for us, but yeah. it really wasn't like that. And some people may have preconceived notions about what it's like living in an RV. Mm-hmm. And it's really kind of freeing and liberating because you get to basically do whatever you want whenever you want. You're kind of on your own. Absolutely. And, and every morning when I open up the windows and the blinds, I'm like, where the hell, where, where the hell am I? Yeah, what, what state are we in? And this is the other thing about it. I, I just say to Bruce, because from being in corporate life, you, you're so regimented on a daily basis, right? Every yeah. day is so busy. You know where you're at every mm-hmm. day in the week, right? Well, oh, it's, yeah. it starts off when you're um, in RV life, it starts off like, okay, is it Tuesday? Oh, no, it's Friday. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, it's Friday. Okay. So, so it's moved from losing days. Then it's like, is this the, the second week of the month or is this the third week? Oh no, it's the fourth week of the month. It's like, okay, so now what you're losing weeks, right? So now we're losing weeks. Now it's months, right? Yeah. It's like, what month is this? Now, what state are we in? I can't yeah. tell because the right. weather changes all the time. Exactly. We don't have our like routine uh, yeah. weather. Yeah. Right. So it's been really kind of a challenge getting used right. to that. And then the seasonality to your point too, because we would go, when we came across the entire uh, north of the country, we were literally chasing rainbows or getting the hell out of the snow. Yeah. So that was our biggest chasing, concern. Like, the avalanche is chasing you. Like, right. we're leaving. Right. Yeah, the snow um, was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, because I did not want to take the RV through the snow. Yeah, not no. the thankfully, thankfully, Uncle yeah. Joe has an Arctic pack on there. Kept us Ooh, warm. Yeah. There you go. And that was for the ice fishing. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> exactly. We forgot. But hey, everything comes full circle, right? That's right. Exactly. And let me tell you, it kept us warm in Idaho. It did. Man. We hit a blizzard. And there. we saw yeah. so many rainbows in um, Wyoming and Yellowstone. Uh, so it really was 
the rainbow tour and the chasing rainbows. It mm -hmm. was just like every other, other day it was a rainbow. That's awesome. That we, yeah, it was great. So hopefully what's going to happen is once we get this uh, channel up and going, which is going to be very soon now, um, we're going to be able to help other people understand what it's like to live on the road. I guess during COVID, there was a big boom in RVs. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, families and stuff yeah, were, were um, selling their homes and moving yeah. into um, rigs. So and there's a the lot of families out there that mm -hmm. we were not expecting to see. Yeah, that was a huge, um, from a training perspective as well, from the whole homeschool piece, Yeah, as well as um, a lot of professionals that are just on the road that are this new generation mm -hmm. that are able to be on the road 100 percent mm -hmm. because they are mobile, work, yeah so. work from wherever and that's right as long as you got wi-fi that's, you know? well and that's a that's <laughs> let's talk about wi-fi oh you don't, you don't have wi-fi never mind <laughs> no we have wi-fi but yeah, we, say, we have, Charlie. they have to have this <laughs> thing 42 Charlie. Hue. we have to have this thing <laughs> we learned really quickly that you have to have this thing called redundancy with wi-fi where you have to have backup plans because some places you can use your hot spot some places you can use your um your gateway and some places you just can't get Wi-Fi, right? So you have to have all these backups. So we have our phones, we have our our gateway um, for T-Mobile, and we also have a Verizon hotspot. So luckily for us, everywhere we've gone, we've been able to get Wi-Fi, except I think one area in Wyoming where nothing worked. Yeah. So we were so we're far We're clearly out. done for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no one's going to know for And let weeks. me tell you, when you don't have Wi-Fi, you think, life is is bad but then you don't have wi-fi yeah <laughs> and then yeah. you can't get online you can't do anything you can't download videos you can't work you can't do anything it's kind of stressful mm -hmm. but yeah we had to figure out redundancy and that's been an issue bruce keeps talking about getting starlink but i'm not so sold starlink, on starlink. sponsor us <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> i don't know what that is starlink it's, uh, is that satellite, satellite it's satellite oh. internet service that young What's his name? Elon Musk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So people, it's new to RVs, but people are kind of gravitating towards it. I find that we don't really need it. Yeah, we've been fortunate. We've had it, the other two systems work and they're actually less expensive. So, mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Anyway. I, but, all, the, all the tips and tricks. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest, um, I guess, the biggest lesson that you've learned coming from corporate life to making this jump to just saying like, we're doing this. My luck for me, it's that you can basically do anything you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. You really can. I didn't think that I would be ever be a carpenter or a plumber or an electrician. I just never in a million years. I would tell Bruce when every time at, at the house in New York, I'd be like, if something broke, I'd be like, let's call the repairman, you know, I'd, let's hire somebody to do this, blah, blah, blah. And now when we're out on the road, we can't hire people, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have to do it. And you become resourceful. And I think the lesson I learned is that you really can do it. You know, I, things I didn't think I could do, I, I actually have done. And I, it makes you feel really good mm -hmm. when you accomplish it. I think mine has been patience that I've never had in my life. <laughs> I mean, and I can tell, you know, we've known each other for what? I think we're coming up on nine years. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. 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 Eight yeah. years, nine years. Um. And I've noticed a difference in you, Bruce. Yeah. Like, always was connected to the computer up at five, eight, four a.m. Probably. Right. He's like, "Bitch, five. It's four. Um, four a.m. You know." And you're, you know, it was just like it's a lot of responsibility that you were just kind of used to, right? You know, right. And then when that went away, it's like, oh, yeah. It's a hmm. different. It's a different life. It really is. And the most important things are not the things that you think. Um, which is definitely um, something, but that sense of urgency, it's like, you know, things will get done, but you know, I, as Rodney says, I have 20 projects always. Going, oh my gosh. So she's like, always <laughs> got multiples, but you know, they all get done. And what I always tell them is uh, when I start 20, that means that 20 finish at once usually. Yes, too. So it's yeah. like that boom, boom, boom. I think you have an Enneagram, <laughs> some Enneagram 7 in you because I'm the same way. I'm like, why do one thing at a time when I can do 20 things at a time? And that is so <laughs> not me. And that, I am like, let me do one thing and finish it oh, before I move yeah. on to the next thing. But but Bruce is like but multitasker, multitasker supreme. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're very good at that. Yeah. I'm 
I, it drives me crazy sometimes. And I sleep like, till nine sometimes. So, yeah, now nice. you sleep till nine. nine. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, nine o'clock. And I'm a night owl, right? So I get things. I have my creative juices and everything flowing at night. His is early in the morning usually. So mm -hmm. patience. Um, patience, yeah. 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 That's a good one. That's a good yeah. lesson. What about, you know, if you if you would have any advice for anybody, and it could be RVs, it could, you know, be something else, but anybody who is kind of stuck in their way of doing things and only used to one way of life, mm -hmm. but has this desire and opportunity to do something completely, you know, just off the radar that just unexpected, you know, but it's there, the opportunity presents itself and something says yes, but then there's a lot of fear that can hold you back. Like, mm -hmm. what would you tell that person? Or I guess if you look back and, you know, yourself in that position, what would you tell yourself? I would say you never want to look back at your life with regret ever. You do not want to regret any decisions. And this, like Rodney said, it was like the stars just came upon us. And if you really look back in your life, those are the moments. And I know um, with the direction of this podcast, it's all about kind of creating your own fate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, those moments you can definitely pulse the chapter changes in your life and how things all culminate to kind of support it um and if you don't take that juncture in the road um you may have regret in the, in the future so you know i definitely felt that if we kept on the new york path we had been there seven years and we had done we had risen to the tops of our game as our financial planner calls it um, we were ballers. And <laughs> ballers, <laughs> Evan, yeah. love you. Um, so <laughs> anyway, so uh, we had done what we kind of came there to do, and we found the most beautiful city in the world and loved it. But if we did not jump on board with this opportunity, we definitely would have regretted it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. I would say the same thing. Um, not to regret what you do, but don't let fear hold you back. That's the other thing. I think people let the fear, the voices in their own head and others around them telling mm -hmm. them, you know, not to do it, to stay safe. You really got to take the chance. Um, Meg, remember when you and I were talking about the universe and all of its yeah. gifts yeah, and uh, how you shouldn't really hold on to things so tightly because if you hold on to things so tightly, when the universe comes around with all of its gifts, you might miss out. Right? Yeah, your hands full. Because your hands are full. All these things you're holding on to. Yeah. Right. And so I feel like that's a big lesson that I learned. And I think that others should really listen to that inner voice. If they really want to do something, they just should do it. They just shouldn't talk themselves out of it. They shouldn't listen to the negativity of others. And because if, if like, if you don't do it, you're going to have regret. You mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. And that's, I've learned that from like owning a salon. I've learned that from moving around from city to city. And from now this new chapter with RVing, I mean, if we hadn't done this, I probably would have said, what if, right? What yeah. if we hadn't, what if we had done this? What if we had done that? And I don't want to live my life like that. Right. And you have all these amazing stories and, and memories friends. and yeah and friends, friends across and new the friends. Country. Oh my, i'm oh my so happy that i mean i've got to see you so many times uh, no. you know, we, went oh, yeah. to, we went to nolan's together no, last I, year we were, uh, hopped in and drove uh, <laughs> that was fun <laughs> that was fun that was a good that, time that was really fun well and yeah. that's the thing with being mobile that mm -hmm. we just you know was unexpected we see family and friends more than we ever have mm -hmm. yeah it's great the most because, important thing yeah and you have these like holdups when you're cut like uh, caught up in this nine to five or corporate life or whatever it is just your usual whatever it mm -hmm. looks like where you just it's like the momentum of the mundane if mm -hmm. that makes sense where it's like i can't get out of this out like of hamster wheel right yeah and and exactly. go see this friend or do this or have this experience or try this because you're just so caught up in a path that you can see the end to and Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I, I felt a lot of the times with friends that we, you know, with our five friends in New York, that was, you know, about the most that we could handle. Yeah. Like, you know, the core, the core five. Yeah, the, yeah, core, no, the, the core. core five. But with this ability of the RV, we have over 20 friends that we stay in touch with. So yeah. it's it's been great. Yeah, it really has. And it's again, like you said, you get that tunnel vision and you don't see anything that's coming that could be coming on your peripheral vision on your side and you could miss something really important mm -hmm. or something really 
you know, beautiful if you're just looking down this narrow road. Yeah. So this kind of expands your vision a whole lot, in my opinion, because you're out on the road and you've got like, you know, beautiful scenery and you've got new people you're meeting and it just changes your, your ideas about what life is. It renews your faith in humanity. Yeah. I mean, we live in the city and it's very easy to get like burnt out and, um, but the human down like, on the compassion humans, right? on people for for people that want to help us it's mm -hmm. been phenomenal right like like I, we were saying about the the villagers coming to get us that has not happened mm -hmm. at all it's been actually the opposite of that mm -hmm. so that's been a, a huge learning for us and realization that you know again people are lovely if you give them a chance right yeah. they'll show you who they are if you just listen to them mm -hmm. Well, and also not even just learning, but also teaching, you know, mm -hmm. what you're teaching the people in, you know, at each stop along the way, because it might not be the normal, you know, uh, RV that rolls up, you know, Josephine is Absolutely. one of a kind. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just say that, one she of a really kind. Is. So, and you, you know, know, I didn't even think about that, Meg, but you're Absolutely. right. The Giving, things that we're probably teaching mm -hmm. them too. Yeah. Right. Un unbeknownst to us, right. Just from living yeah, our life. The RV industry has a long way to go. Let me tell you, with the traditional RVs, mm -hmm. it's like, oh. Let's get some like, hue lights in here. <laughs> yeah. You know? exactly. Yeah. I see so, this. Yeah. I see yeah. this one year from now. Maybe Jason that's Rain what we'll do, there with Maybe design, we'll design, design RV, RV design. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. No, I think that's a great, you know, overall lesson of um, not letting fear stop you yeah. or um, fear this is such a path inhibitor. that you're on. Yeah, it is. And like you can get so blindsided by this life that you think you should continue to have. And you say like, Oh, I, I don't think I could ever do that or be that. Or I don't know. I never See, thought about it before. And that's that and, inner voice. I think mm -hmm. that you should really like, those are the things that you shouldn't be saying to yourself. Like I shouldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. It's like, no, you can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm you, doing it. You, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you can do it. And you, you just have to have the support around you and you just have to have the, the, the courage. It's really courage mm -hmm. yeah. to do it right. Um, to step out and do it and live your life out loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever your, whatever your rainbow is, the courage to chase it. So mm -hmm. love that. Find your pot of gold. Find the pot of gold. Right. Oh, I love that. <laughs> We've found plenty pots of gold. Already, <laughs> yeah. <haven't we? laughs> and it's only been what, um, coming up on your second year. Yeah. 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 We're on, we're on four months. Yeah. Here four yeah. months. Now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. You guys are going to be here for, for having us. Uh, so months. Proud of you. So, oh my yeah, God. Thank I you. you. I know. I, um, we met like it was 2014, I think. Was it 14? I think you're right. I think so. Yeah. yeah. 2014. And, um, wow. That just is crazy. I subbed a. <laughs> A spin class uh -huh. at a big box gym mm -hmm. last minute and i met you that's yes. right and it was fate it was you know? fate. it, it was, was absolutely fate, fate. for sure awesome. for sure and you didn't want to talk you were like rodney was nervous about talking to to you i'm like oh we're going to talk into we're, that yeah I wasn't, you know i wasn't sure i was like who is this girl who is right? this girl, who is this girl teaching my class not or playing teaching classic our class? rock right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the suburbs yeah. i was married and it had brown hair <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And I was, I was a little intimidated because you were, I thought you were an excellent cycle instructor and I was a little intimidated meeting you. So, well, thank you. And Bruce was like, we're meeting her. No fear. <laughs> yes. And we became besties. And then honestly, if it weren't, if it weren't for you two, cause I was like down and out in a part of my life and I'd gotten divorced that I did a, a career change. And when I went to soul cycle, um, we'll go back to the baller status comment from before. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, you guys are the reason that I am a soul cycle instructor because I stayed with you. You opened up your home for free mm -hmm. and you said, I said, Hey, I got this opportunity. I, I, I need a place to live for, you know, um, six weeks or whatever it was. And they said, come on, come on, come on. Like the, the, the yeah. summer was so fun, but they said, you are more than welcome to stay with us. And I, First of all, bougie apartment. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Um, but other people that I stayed with, they had to like sublet a room for six weeks from a stranger, all these things, right? And travel in, you know, an hour and a half of travel into West Village. And 
people were complaining like, oh my gosh, I woke up with a roach on my pillow. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I woke up with a mint on my pillow. There's like a, there's a, an espresso waiting for me <laughs> and a chocolate. Because Bruce has been up since four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been up since four. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. But yeah, yeah. Well, that's the hospitality in us. It was our joy. Exactly. It was our pleasure to have you stay with us. We just... Yeah wanted you to be so successful at your at your choice of being a soul cycle instructor and i knew you would be mm-hmm. i knew you would be Always. just yeah. needed to have that ability to come and train right yeah. so yeah why, why not i'm forever grateful I mean, oh we are forever grateful to have you in it our was lives. too short Next it was six it was it went so up. fast <laughs> it did it really did but we'll see where we all end up but <coughs> actually can you edit <coughs> this cop out <coughs> Huh, okay. Um, yeah, here I have one. Oh, gosh, Amy. I get caught up talking and dry out. Too excited. But <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, New York. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll see where we all end up. Um, you know, Absolutely. yeah, it's going to be, knows? yeah, who knows? It's going to be, come it's a journey. With us. Absolutely. I'll, I'll come chase Soul cycle come on, everywhere girl. around Mobile. the country. You, you come on, girl. <laughs> we'll do pop ups. There, there you go. go. Come on. Right? Girl. And when the podcast makes it big, you guys can come on the PJ, you know, and we'll just fly around everywhere, you know. You too, oh, maybe that'll so. be the next thing. Oh, yeah. that's the other thing Bruce wants to do after we get the um, RV out of our system. He wants to do the catamaran. Yeah. Oh, there you go. He can design the interiors to my private jet. Oh, yeah. There you go. That awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. By then, we'll have some other technology, I'm sure. Well, I will be posting all about Chasing Rainbows when it comes out, so you can um, be sure to follow them. Is there anywhere where people can like find you now if they, um, if they love you, want to see you? Well, the best thing to do is to, we have a website. It's ChasingRainbows.com. Um, the YouTube channel should be up very soon. Um, but the best place to reach us right now is through our consulting business, which yeah. is R&B Consulting where we actually do consulting on the side awesome cool well i will tag all of those um tags there so you can click below if you are watching this because now we are on youtube if you um are not aware create your feet podcast is now available um, with an aesthetic visually for you too yes i love it so that was my one of my goals for this year so it Hit it early. So the flower's happy. The flower is yes. happy. You just like to watch it, you know? I think that's where you got a lot of your tips from RVing. It was YouTube. Yes, you know? So Oh yes. Oh my gosh. YouTube was our like go to. Go to. I'd learned how to put in a roof and a floor. There you go. See? YouTube. It's Sponsor everything. us, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much again for coming on the show. I will definitely have you on again. Um, you know, if there's one thing that I believe, and I know you guys believe it too, it's that you can create your life and you can create your fate. So if we could leave you with just one thing, it would be this. Expect, Expect good, good things, things always. And, and they, they will happen. happen.